Mojave County with the transfer. It's going to be Interstate 15, about mile post 16 and a half southbound. I'm back. Linda and I have been out on what we called Our America the Beautiful Tour. We took off for two months in our little uh, Lucille, the RV, and went on a real adventure. And every adventure has, you know, the build up and the good points and all the beautiful pictures, etc. And then tragedy or the challenge and the recovery and the road home. This has all of those pieces to it. And I have videos on all of these places we went to. And we went from North Dakota to Baja, Mexico. And we tried to hit every national park, national monument we possibly could, uh, but yet spend enough time at each to take some pictures and hear some stories to tell. And I'll have videos on each one of them, Arches, uh, the Badlands, Estes Park, and the Elk. I have one of those videos out already. Capitol Reef, Zion, Canyonlands, Mesa Verde, Death Valley. All of these I've never gone to. I'm 73 years old and I never went to any of them. It's kind of sad. So I was thinking, well, what's the, should I put out all these videos in chronological order and buy the parks we did? And uh, I haven't decided that yet. But what I have decided is to do this synopsis of the trip and with focusing on the tragedy, uh, the challenge. So, you know, we've seen a lot of beautiful things. These photos flashing um, in front of you will show you that. But the real story that we left to get away from just all of the insanity and media and the politics and the wars and just the ugliness in the world, the wokeism, all of it, the anti-God environment. We thought, well, let's get out and uh, see God's creation and the beauty and see some things we've never done. So. That's what we did. We bought an old RV, and we knew we'd have to put some work into it. After we had stopped at Badlands, after we stopped at uh, Estes Park, we went on to Canyonlands and Arches, Mesa Verde. And on our return from Mesa Verde to Blanding, Utah, I noticed a lot of fluid on the driver's right rear tire I thought might be brake fluid or something I really couldn't tell and then so I took it in to uh, the Ford dealer in Moab uh, which they said they didn't want to work on it because they gave some excuse it was too tall or whatever but for this issue you would have only wanted it about two feet off the ground so they just didn't want to work on it but that's Ford but what they did say is they looked at it and charged me an hour of shop time to do it was that it needed a, a rear differential bearing and seal and likely disc brakes because there's so much fluid all over them. They couldn't do it. So we located a small shop, very friendly people, and uh, they went about doing the work there in Moab. And then we left Moab, 
to go to Capitol Reef and Bryce Canyon, Zion. And we noticed something still didn't seem right. This lumbering lumpadum, 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 gloppity gloopity, gloppity gloopity in the back. And then the bearing, the uh, the flex on that seemed like it was every once in a while the brakes would touch or, you know, the, too much going on back there. So, anyway, we got to uh, I don't know what happened. St. George. We left uh, Zion, got to St. George and headed down 15. Where's the flashers at? And the most dangerous road Holy in crap. America. It's like the tire fell off or Some often say that. And it, won't it definitely go. has the most yeah, the fatalities smoke. for the states of Arizona, Utah, Where? and uh, California, I believe. It's a bad road. Very, it's a Virgin Where's River Canyon. Track? Lots of twisty, blind turns. Our axle broke on I-15 on the way down on a turn and the um, truck a, just came to a, the RV just yeah, came to a stop yes. right no, up against a, a concrete what, yeah, safety something. wall for a piece of the canyon that went on for a long ways both directions no, and we were we stuck in the slow lane with 80 mile an hour semis cars flying down behind us. Flashers went on, but the likelihood of us not having an accident or people slamming in the back of us was very likely. It was going to happen, and we were pondering what to do, what to what to think about all this, how to pray for God's grace, Southbound on 15. which we went about doing with I earnest. Seen the last mileage thing. And after we started praying, in our silence, each of us, Linda made a call, 911 call to the uh, uh, 911 call that took it and we explained the situation and they were sending out tow truck and an officer to, to warn the traffic. And I've learned a lesson. I'm going to have a kit right away, but I'm not sure I could have even got out of it. If we were in the road and if I would have got out, it would have been hit. So first miracle, God's grace, first miracle. We had cell reception. Later we would find that there's only two places in that canyon where you get cell reception and the axle broke on the first reception area that was the first miracle we had flashers going i'm hitting the brakes linda's making calls it's just frantic and I'm looking in that rear view mirror waiting for something to slam into the back of us and we're praying and hoping. So I need a wrecker and uh, somebody to watch for traffic because we're, we're blocking the right lane. Okay, we can get somebody started that way. We can start a tow truck as well. It would be an out-of-pocket cost just so you're aware. What is your name? Suddenly a, a welder welding truck went by he had some welding equipment in the back and he stopped down at the only available little pull-off after the concrete wall immediately backed up to us screamed ran around the truck good samaritan miracle two with a chain hooked to his truck chained us up and just said we have to get you out of here we have to get you to a safe spot Thanks, and he pulled us He's down the road, past the concrete um, barrier, to a safe spot. Yes. And he just well, came well, back, I unhooked us, and looked and waved and said, I have to get to work. To to I asked him, is there anything I can do for you? Um, and he said, no, just have to get to work. And off he went. 
Utah. We just crossed out of Utah into Arizona corner, and then we go back into Nevada. Um, yeah. You do? Yeah, Las we're Vegas. online, man. Is there anything I can do for you? No. Yeah, we're okay, and he's, you know, called 911, and a really nice guy backed up, and the police got us out of the southbound wave here. So we're just going to be waiting on highway patrol and, and um, wrecker and, you know, tow us in to the stuff. So we'll, we'll call you back as soon as we get to a place where there's a little bit of better cell coverage. All right. Thanks for calling back, Bill Shaw. Love you. Okay. And that did not come back in very good. Okay. And I just told him we'd get a hold of him once things yeah. settle down a bit. Geico Insurance. Told yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm trying. Two miracles. Third miracle, tow truck showed up very shortly after that, and it was the right tow truck. Because uh, the Highway Patrol said it was an RV, so they thought they might have to get uh, the big rig for the semis. But he had a deck uh, tow truck. We got it up on the, the unit, and uh, on the way back, he said, where do you want to take this? I said, well, I had it in one shop, and I had it to Ford. They don't want to do it. I, I don't know anything about St. George. You, can you help me? I said, where would you take your car? And he said, there's two places I'd take it to. Let me give him a call. So he gave the first one a call, and they were just too busy. shop semis they work on and they said they'd take it so he dropped us off we dropped off Lucille there then he took me to get a rental car those that whole piece with that truck driver was miracle number three we all came through it truck was at a reliable repair shop and um, we were pretty traumatized by it. Linda especially, she just didn't want to go any further. But me being stubborn, we had reservations for Death Valley that we paid for, and uh, they were pretty expensive at the Oasis. So I insisted and we drove all the way there. Then we settled down for two days. So this first video is a, the three miracle video about a lot of pieces that people don't see about RV travel, that you can be stuck out in the middle of nowhere with a mechanical problem, and uh, you'd just be out of luck.
Some of this is my own fault because I should have checked uh, the rig over better, and I didn't. I did see a few drops of fluid there, maybe. But that bearing actually went out when we finally got to Bismarck, North Dakota. And so now it's sitting in a shop. This will be the third bearing replacement, but we're not gonna do that. There must be something wrong with the rear end. Something's bent, something's not in alignment. Um, they have spacers on the wheels to push them out. Those should be gotten rid of, or just a whole new crate rear end put in there with all the alignment and everything right. And do a few other things, shocks and uh, leaf helper, leaf springs. And it's down there, and we'll do that. And it's not really the fault of the first two mechanics because they didn't know something's bent, something isn't right. So good news is we're back home. And uh, this video, the first one, is the challenge. <laughs> Going to do a lot of them about some beautiful places with beautiful pictures, so it all worked out. And we're home. We had Thanksgiving, so all is well. So I hope you enjoy it. Um, I've talked too much. I'm going to have to cut this down a bit. So three miracles happened as we broke an axle on the deadliest highway in America. Blocking traffic. The three miracle video. Nielsen's. Yeah. Okay, keep going. Then it's just around the corner of the building here then. I know we had kind of a weirdism when we did it. Uh, you have arrived. We have arrived. There's Lucille. Over here. There's Lucille. Well, we might as well park right there in front. Yeah, might as well, right here. We're off the road. 